Every January, SHOT Show rolls around, and it floods the city of Las Vegas with thousands of people rocking these badges. Real firearms are the bread and butter of this convention, but you'll still find a few airsoft booths where representatives show off the new, the tried and true, and even prototypes that are always piquing the interests of people walking by. Sometimes the new replicas from Lancer Tactical, G&G, ASG, and Elite Force, and so on, are immediate successes with the public and on social media platforms where they're shared on and other times they're dead on arrival. This is true every year, so I thought that this time I put together a quick list on my top five favorite airsoft guns at SHOT Show 2020. There was a lot to check out this year, like the all new pistols from G&G, God, I want a rose gold GTP9 now, and the very sleek ASG and B&T USW that really got my attention, and would you believe that some know-it-alls tried to call ASG out at the show? Apparently, they said that they asked B&T about the ASG USW, and they said that they had no idea it was being replicated. And I was there wondering, what the hell does that matter? I'm not surprised that they wouldn't know anything about it. They're not the people that ASG are talking to about licensing. They talk to the higher ups that actually run the company. That was just really funny to see how those guys got verbally spanked by the ASG reps. Anyway, my trip to SHOT Show 2020 was sponsored by Airsoft GI, who took care of my flight, my hotel, and food while I was there. They just do a lot for me, so I just really want to thank them for that, because they're the reason why I can get content like this to you. So I'll leave links down below in the description to send you off to Airsoft GI's website, and I'll also leave some information so you can see how to use our new coupon code to knock off all shipping costs on any order over $14.99. But with all that said now, let me explain why I'm picking the KWA Ronin 47 as my number 5 pick. Now I get confused as an M4 hater, quite a lot. I know that's the most supported and most desirable platform in our game, and in the real firearms community for many reasons. Hell, I'd actually put Elite Forces and VFC's Avalon internal equipped M4A1 in the 6th spot if I had a 6th spot. That rifle makes me wonder if we'll ever see a full length M16 line with Avalon internals inside of it. But I think for this rifle, the reason why I'm interested in it is probably the uniqueness in the magazine and the lower receiver. That just got my attention, but being as the magazines will be proprietary, really annoys me. I know what they're shooting for with this prototype, but damn, that's another set of magazines that I'll have to buy up that will only work with this one gun because you'll never be able to fit any standard AK magazines in this thing. But I know it'll probably still look really nice next to my Ronin T6. Besides the Ronin 47, KWA also had the QRF Mod 3 on display. At first, I really thought it accepted the KMP9 magazine straight from the gas blowback itself, but that wasn't the case for this AEG. Of course, that would have been pretty awesome to see. Now, there's not a whole lot to talk about as for internals, except for the 2.5 gearbox that KWA will add inside it. I think the bigger development would be the plan to allow people to build their own Ronin by mix matching parts, magazine options, stocks, controls, and so on. Just thinking about it, a Ronin 47 with a full length stock and a 6 inch rail would look pretty nice. I think there's still time for KWA to rework the 47, but will they? It's not cheap to remake an entire lower receiver. Molds aren't cheap at all. Even if it remains exactly the same as you see right here, I'd still be interested in the rifle, but I can already see how people will judge it for being another standard magazine and tolerant platform. Next up at number 4, it's another AK inspired rifle that I've been keeping my eye on ever since ICS first revealed it in December 2019. This is the CXP ARK, or ARK as I've been calling it. We're seeing more and more in-house designs and creativity with old platforms, and at the moment, I'm really happy about it. ICS is always trying out new stuff, and they've got a lot of replicas that I'm curious about, like their new 9mm PDW and their new MP5, but the ARC is at the top of my list for ICS. If everything goes to plan, ICS says that they'll be coming out with a new hybrid smart trigger that will shoot in a burst if you pull the trigger on full auto, but it'll shoot in full auto continuously if you hold the trigger down. There will also be two versions, with the triple S model being the more high end of the two, but both will internally be all version 3 parts, making upgrades and repairs pretty easy to handle. As for the price point, I expect the higher 300 mark from 360 to 380 dollars. Controls were nice and it felt really great as a prototype and it definitely stood out. It should be a neat addition to the AK variants available on the market. 
and I hope the final release can perform just as well as the exterior stands out. It's not a classic looking replica, but I'm still hoping this rifle will do well when it releases sometime this year. But moving on, I'll admit that some people might say that I'm being too harsh, but when I say this, I mean it, because I don't speak alone when I say that the Mark 19 at the Lancer Tactical booth was a huge letdown in many more ways than one. This, this over £100 $7,000 pretty looking monster could be replaced with an HPA Classic Army DT4 and it would do the exact same thing in function. This Mark 19 replica is in my opinion an example of real world clickbait. That belt of 40mm grenades all belted up looks intimidating and if they were all tagging rounds then that would be a really scary sight. But they don't feed into the gun anyway. Like you wouldn't want to get excited about something like a full metal Spas 12 with the proper stock and hook folded on top for it to just be a full auto only AG. Like that wouldn't make any damn sense. So could you imagine a fully functioning Mark 19 that would cycle and spit out tagging rounds in full auto? You would have a contender for one of the most badass airsoft guns and replicas of all time. But we didn't get that. And honestly, I don't think something like that would even cost as low as this model goes for. You think that a full metal, fully functioning Airsoft Mark 19 grenade launcher would only cost $7,000? <laughs> a whole belt of, let's say, 20 tagging rounds wouldn't even be cheap either. And any other type of shell like shower shells would be pretty much useless for something like this. But what Lancer Tactical had to show off besides this Mark 19 really made the top five and that would be the Chiapa Rhino line. Is it Chiapa or Chapa? Get to the Chapa. I should probably look up a video and see how it's said. These were really popular at SHOT Show, as well as with the public when videos and photos started circulating. Only one of these was chambered for 6mm airsoft BBs when they were at the show, but all three will make the airsoft market in small numbers this year, according to Angel from Lancer Tactical. Do I really need to explain why I like this revolver so much? I already have a soft spot for my ASG Dan Weston 715, and I've been searching for a good unique revolver to replace it. So why not a Rhino? I mean the Mateba is way above all the revolvers that I wish I could acquire, but I don't know if I'd ever run it. This one on the other hand was made properly. It's CO2, it's full metal, it has a pair of real sights straight from Chiapa, and it even comes with a real case. Say what you will about Lancer Tactical, but I really respect them for distributing this revolver and for distributing the BO, MP40, and Mosin Nagant. We needed more higher end World War II replicas and the MP40 was built very nicely. Maybe I can get one shipped over to take a closer look at it and do a full length review, but we'll see. However, for my number three pick, it goes to the Lancer Tactical Chiapa Rhinos. So before I show off number two, I just wanted to say that this year's SHOT Show was a bit disappointing in regards to Airsoft. IWA in Germany and the MOA show in Taipei, Taiwan looks so much more interesting. So many awesome gas blowbacks are on the way, like a new Barrett line. This one is my all-time favorite. A gas blowback FAL was shown off by VFC, I think. Gas blowback full-sized Uzis are making the rounds all over the internet, and it's about f***ing time. The MOA show just looks so much better but I couldn't exactly fly to Taipei to go check out any of those replicas. I would have loved to see the GHK booth and the LCT booth, and throwing something like this over my shoulder would have topped everything else that I handled at SHOT Show. But getting back on track at number two, let me explain why this little controversial GNG Japanese inspired rifle is on my list. This got a bit of hate right away when I dropped my video from the GNG booth. Not because of the rifle itself, and not because of the white controller that makes MOSFET configurations easy and quick like fire selections and trigger pulls, it was because the black controller that GNG has yet to put together. That controller will lock out other controllers and give people the option to lock compatible guns to semi-auto only. Not everyone can just go and buy a black controller though. It's only going to be sold to field and store owners if they request one. This rifle, of course, replicates the Japanese Hua Type 64, a 762 by 51 mm battle rifle that's exclusively used by the Japanese Self-Defense Forces and the Japanese Coast Guard. I first saw an earlier prototype of this replica at the 2019 GNG CQB World Cup, where ironically the Japanese team took first place and took home 10,000 USD 
which I'm sure they had converted into yen. I instantly fell in love with this rifle, even before G&G had the idea to throw in a remote control and all sorts of programmability into it. Even if it was a basic AEG using a version 2 or a version 3 gearbox, I would have still loved to own one. As of right now, there's not much to be said about the internal build, but I believe it'll have a somewhat proprietary version 3 gearbox inside it with all the tech you'd find in a G2 G&G gearbox. G&G also wants to produce a drum mag for this rifle, but I don't know if that's something that I'll actually get myself. I'd probably just stick to the normal magazines. Interestingly, the hop-up adjuster is built into the mock gas adjustment dial near the end of the barrel, and the entire rifle is built out of metal and wood. Now this is a bit of a niche weapon, even for G&G, who have done things like the FNC and the C7A1, but at least those rifles took M4 magazines. My prediction for this rifle is that it won't release until around winter of 2020, if at all this year, but I could easily be wrong about that. Regardless, I hope to get one of these rifles, and I hope that we can see some more developments with the remote control setup. I know a lot of people hate the idea, but I appreciate G&G thinking outside the box and trying to pioneer. I think a lot of us over-exaggerate whenever a company tries to do something a little different and try to expand on Airsoft. And I think that kind of stuff needs to stop already. Finally, for my top pick, I have the only gun that I wanted to film that I didn't even have time to turn the camera on to cover. I just didn't have the time, sadly, but I'm currently working with the manufacturer to see how airsofters in the US would like to have it built. The USW from ASG is cool, and the ICS 9mm PDW is pretty sleek, but I never doubted that the modified PP2000 would be at the top of my list when I first thought about doing this countdown. Maybe it's because of my Modern Warfare 2 days, or maybe it's just because gas pullbacks are just too much fun, especially when it's an SMG package, and maybe it's because of the massive magazine that it was displayed with. Only the gas pullback Uzi I saw Iwa could top this for me. By the time that I stopped at the Jack Precision booth where this sneaky replica was hiding in plain sight, Brain Exploder was actually checking it out and talking to the guys at Jag. I could have went straight to a double barrel Jag arm scattergun, but I stopped as soon as I saw this. I know the super extended magazines are a little ridiculous, even in Jet the Desert Fox's hands, but it just looked great with this Russian piece of work. This replica was pretty beaten up by the time I got to it. The fire sucker was broken off, things were wiggling around on it. It was far from a finished product, but I was just excited to finally get my hands on it and of course post pics of it on my Instagram page. By the way, uh, thank you Brain Exploder for taking pics of me being a nerd with the PP2K. At the moment, Modify is debating if they should produce CO2 magazines with the PP2000 or if they should just stick to green gas and I'm pretty sure they have a lot more work to do. We'll see if this Modify gas gun is out this year. Who really knows? Things always change and quality control is always a factor, especially if things are rushed. So I'll wait another year if that means that it'll be amazing upon release. And with that, I think I'm all out of things to say about these five airsoft guns from SHOT Show 2020. I had a lot of fun at SHOT Show 2020 handling all these new guns, but I also had a lot more fun hanging out with friends that I barely get to see. I wish I had the time to catch up with House Gamers Dayton or maybe Gun Gamers Eric, but I think they were just really busy and I think Eric just couldn't go this year. And I completely understand. After all, I have like 15 other videos that I need to do myself, so yeah. One thing I would advise manufacturers to try if they're not already doing so would be to look into the comments and reactions into the SHOT Show videos that are done at their booths. See what people are talking about or asking for and weigh in if it's a profitable business decision to try out new stuff. I mean, it's always fun to ask for stuff like a PTRS airsoft replica, but really, if you think about it, would a lot of them sell? I'm pretty sure something like that would flop as it would be a costly project that would only cater to a small group of people. This is sad, but true when you look into why a lot of airsoft replicas haven't been made yet. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a small countdown that I just really wanted to put together, and I hope that you would tell me your favorite thing that you saw come from SHOT Show, even if it wasn't airsoft related. I know Chuck Norris was there, and never really got the chance to go see him, and I know this safe went viral on the internet. It's a beautiful safe, so I'm not surprised in any way. I'd like to thank Airsoft GI who sponsored my trip to SHOT Show, as well as to SC Village and Wildlands Airsoft, where I got some amazing gameplay and photos, and more on that as I put those videos together, as well as Alexander Cooper, who invited me to attend Battle of Augusta on April 25th in Virginia. 
This is going to be a huge event thanks to Airsoft GI, VA Airsoft, and a whole list of people, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Then on Sunday, I'll head towards Balahack Airsoft for the first time to see just how crazy that field can really get. Tickets for the Battle of Augusta will be linked down below in the description. And then I had the Lone Star Showdown to go to in 878 Airsoft, and then the 10th anniversary of SS Airsoft to go to in Atlanta, Georgia. There are a lot of places to go to. I'd also like to thank the channel members who've recently joined US Airsoft and these awesome people who've donated through Super Chats during premieres. A huge shout out goes to every single one of these people for supporting the channel and for pushing me to do more and more. Seriously guys, thank you. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. Hey, I need someone who can SMG or a pistol up in here too. Oh, I'm practical.